Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Again, we're on the uh, Gematria series, and the last couple of weeks we've done introductions too. We're going to begin with numbers, letters. So today we're going to start with the letter Aleph, which is one in, in uh, Hebrew numbers. So Aleph, the number one, is unique, as it is the first of the whole numbers. As a single entity, one is the only number that is not plural. There is no multiple elements in it that can be counted or measured, because one does not consist of anything other than itself. Standing alone, and in a class of its own, the number one is naturally used to describe the oneness of God Almighty. This oneness is the oneness of an indivisible unity who is not subject to multiplicity or divisibility, and there is nothing else that is truly one. Nothing really exists outside of him, of God Almighty himself. Now the number one has unique mathematical properties that in some way reflect the unity of God. Unlike all other numbers, whether you multiply it by one by itself or divide one by itself, the answer remains one. One times one is one. One divided by one is one. The eternal declaration of Jewish faith is the Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. It is recited at least twice daily. It is one of the first verses that we are taught as children and the statement we make with our last dying breath. Our mortal testimony to God, the immortal source of all existence, and Jewish life centers upon the realization that He is the source of everything, and existence revolves around Him. The first is naturally predestined to embrace holiness, because it taps into the symbolism of God as the one creator and the first cause. Some examples of firsts being sanctified to God are mitzvot regarding the first fruits, the first of the farmer's crop, the firstborn son, the firstborn of an animal, there are special laws governing the first year of marriage. Other first to connect to a Kohen, a priest, as God's representative on earth, are the Chala, the first dough from bread, Rashus Agez, the first of the shearing of the wool. And the Kohen is the first to be called up to the Torah for an Aliyah, first to lead the grace, and again, other things as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, now we as Jews, are referred to by God as Bani Bechori Yisrael, by firstborn son Israel. The first mitzvah given by God to the Jewish nation was what we call Kiddush HaChodesh, the sanctification of the month starting in the first month of the Jewish calendar, the month of Nisan. At that time, the children of Israel were set on the course to live a sanctified existence, both nationally and individually to become one unique nation. Abraham, Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, is credited as the one individual to realize the purpose of creation. He went out into the world and proclaimed God to be the one and only master of the universe. He preached this to a pagan world that denied God's supremacy. Abraham set into motion the genesis of Israel whose national psyche is similarly bound together with the number one. Now prior to leaving Egypt, the Jews declared the oneness of God as the first and only power. This belief was symbolized within the midst of what we call the Korban, Korban Pesach, the Paschal Lamb. <clears throat> this offering consisted of a lamb that was no older than one year. It was eaten in one group it was roasted whole as one whole entity, one piece. No bones were allowed to be broken from the Paschal offering to fracture its oneness. The number one is an underlying feature of Jewish life, life as a whole. We, the Jewish people, have but one God, one ark, one Torah, one altar, one high priest. And that is why the whole Torah was given to us by one shepherd, God Almighty, and taught to us by one leader, 
Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher. As our enemies have said about us, we are Am Echad Hashochin Lubadu. We are one nation that dwells alone. We are one entity, one man, pulsating to the same heartbeat. When a Jew in Paris suffers, the Jew in New York grieves. Madoff, the greatest thief in history, embarrasses us all, even though we stole nothing. And someone like Rabashkin, being released from prison, makes us all feel better, even though we may never even have met or spoken to the man. When a Jew travels, other Jews around the world routinely open up their doors, their wallets, and their hearts to him, as if he was family. We mirror our Creator as it says, You, God, are one, your name is one, and who is like your people Israel, one nation in the land. In fact, we believe that God Almighty himself wears tefillin, phylacteries, and in his, in ours we say, Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And in God's tefillin it says, Mika Amcha Yisrael Goy Echad Boretz, who is like my people Israel, one nation in the world. In the future messianic era, the world will universally proclaim his oneness. As it says on that day, he will be one and his name will be one. Now, in addition to the numerical values, we also have some words that may have the, many times are connected, that have the same numerical value. So the word echad, which in Hebrew means one, also has a gematria of 13. The Aleph is 1, Ches is 8, Dalit is 4. Again, equals 13, which is the same gematria. Same numerical value as the word Ahava, which means love. When two people love each other, as Rabbi Kiva says that the primary verse in Torah is V'yahavta l'reyacho kamocha, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. When two people love each other, then they bring together the Yudke Vavke, God's name of mercy, that God becomes part of that relationship. And in fact, the Ahava, 13, you double it for two people, is 26. 26 is numerical value of God's name of mercy of the Yudke Vavke. And to take the 26, 2 and 6, and we add it together, which we also, another way of counting, gives us 8. We know that this world was created in six days. On the seventh day, God rested. So seven is the natural order. Eight is something that signifies something above teva, above nature, something that's above the world. The uh, reason why, again, that the brit mila, a circumcision is done on the eighth day. Now, if you take the word achod, as I mentioned before, the aleph stands for one, which is God Almighty. The ches has the numerical value of eight, which alludes to the seven heavens and one earth. And the Dalid, four, alludes to the four directions of the compass. In fact, when we say the Shema, we cover our eyes. And when we finish off, we have in mind that word Echad, that we say we have in mind there is one God and we lift our hands, seven heavens, one earth, and the four directions of the compass. Again, it's all connected with this. In addition, <clears throat> Words many times are a combination of, uh, pardon me, letters are in the combination of other letters. So if you look at the letter Aleph, you look at it closely, <clears throat> it's really a combination of two Yuds and a Vav. Yud, numerical value of 10, 2 times 10 is 20. The Vav, 6, 26. So not only do we see that the Aleph, oneness, alludes to God, but also within the makeup of the letter itself, we also have this indication for the holiest name of God, the yud ke vav ke. In fact, we pronounce it as a, we say Hashem, which translates to mean the name, that we don't even say the name as it is spelled. Now, an interesting aside, and we'll deal with it again next week, that the Torah begins with a bays. Not an Aleph. And one would have thought that if God would begin the Torah, that it would begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So according to tradition, we have a belief, according to Kabbalah, <clears throat> that God 
when went to all the letters and asked them to present a reason as to why they should be the first letter to begin the Torah. And he started with the Tuf, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and came backwards. And when he got to the Bays, he stopped and accepted the logic of the Bays. Again, the word, the letter Bays is the first letter of the word Bracha, which is blessing. He did not even ask the Aleph for an opinion. And because the Aleph did not complain, the Aleph was granted the um, honor of being the first letter in the Aseret HaDibrot, in the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments begins with an Aleph, Anochi, of the word letter for me from the word I. Now, had the Torah began with the Aleph, so again, Aleph is something that connects with the word Arur, which is cursed. And God wanted to begin the Torah with the, with the letter Bez, which is Bracha, which is blessing. So we see that nothing is an accident, that all the, not, not only is the Hebrew alphabet something that we read, much like A, B, C, D that we do in English, but in English there are also numbers. With, the, with Hebrew, every letter has a numerical value and again has a purpose to it. So again, we've finished off with Olive today very quickly and what we'll do starting next week We'll go on to Bayes and then Gimel, and we'll see how far we can get on these, at least the first 20, 30 uh, l numbers in the Jewish um, number system in the alphabet. And we'll also bring in other words, th other types of gematrios uh, that, the, that we may have something to learn from. And again, as, I, as you saw what I did today, not only do we add up the numbers as far as one, two, three, whatever they might be. But if a number, for example, the word emet, which is truth, has a numerical value of 441. But what we do is we add the four, four and one, just like the achot of one, eight and four to get to 13. Emet, we add four, four and one, gets to nine. And again, we'll talk about that when we get to nine, about nine, nine signifying being an example of what truth is all about. And again, we'll